our life as human beings is like a flower. A flower is very beautiful, but only in time. A flower is very precious, but only in time. A flower is very valuable, but only in time. And when the time for the flower comes to wither, it cannot stop it. When we look at the readings of today and uh, the theme in the last two weeks, we are talking about and reflecting on the reality of time. And in this reality of time, we are reflecting on eschatology, the end of the world and the end of things. And this end has also another aspect to it, the apocalypse, the great revelation in the end of the time. Reflecting on this, there are two things that Father Felix was reflecting about, the law of attrition and the law of grace. The law of attrition reminds each and every one of us that everything in the world has a beginning and everything in the world has an ending. Everything in the world has an expiry date and uh, our days depend on how we live. In other words, if we live a life that is full of goodness and virtue, then uh, our end becomes our beginning. When we look at the readings of today, the first and the second reading, we are seeing the end of one world and the beginning of another world. And today God is asking each and every one of us, which world do we belong? Do we belong to the world that is ending or do we belong to the world that is beginning? When we live without faith, we belong to the world that is ending. But when we, believe, when we live in the world of faith, then our world begins when everything else is ending. Interestingly, when we look at the readings of today, we are seeing the end of Babylon the Great, which in a way is just Rome, and at that time, it was invaded during uh, that time of persecution. But also, we also see that end, the end of Babylon. Uh, we can also talk about the end of Babylon as the end of our challenges, the end of the things that actually bring our life into trial. But we also, the, we also see the beginning of another world through St. Andrew Dunglac and, compa and Companions, and they are beginning another world by shedding of their blood. We call upon the grace of God today to fill us with faith and perseverance in our lives so that we may live by the law of grace. Because when we live by the law of grace, our world begins instead of it ending. And as we reflect on this, the following three things are very important. One, as Christians, our world begins on the cross. Our world begins on the cross. And Jesus taught us that on the cross, there is always a beginning without end. When I was going to be ordained a priest, I reflected a lot on the cross, and uh, my souvenir read, Grant, O Lord, that by through the power of the cross, I may bring healing to the wounded world, because in the cross, life has an endless hope, and outside the cross, life has an hopeless end. Hopeless end is when we suffer and live without God 
and that becomes our end. Endless hope is when we live on the cross because on the cross, Jesus transforms everything. We see the mess of the world becoming a very strong message that reminds us that also the messiness of our lives becomes a message when we bring it to the cross. We see Jesus is the victim on the cross, but he transforms it into a victor. We also could be victims of many atrocities in our world today, but Christ is telling us our world begins when the victim goes to the cross. Jesus is tested. Jesus has a lot of pain, but he turns everything into gain. Therefore, we pray in the spirit and inspiration of Andrew Dunglak and Compassions, not to be afraid of the cross. Why? Our world will begin on the cross. The second thing we pray for is to bring our Babylons to God. Babylon is any experience, any circumstance, any challenge in our life that is too big for us that can only be moved by the finger of God. And I'm sure in one way or another, we find ourselves in very complex situations that only God can move those things. Today, God is proclaiming judgment on Babylon that Babylon the Great must fall. Babylon the Great must fall. And this Babylon could be many challenges. When I was walking up the mountain yesterday, I say that I would request each and every one of us today to spiritually think of the Babylon of the moment. What is it in our life that is so heavy that you feel you cannot carry as a human being? What is it in our life, in our families, that is so heavy, that is so painful, that we feel we cannot carry on our own? What is it that is breaking our life and persecuting our lives? There could be as many as all of us, and even as more as even beyond all of us. But today, Jesus is telling each and every one of us today, raise up your hand, raise up your heart. Your liberation is at hand. Babylon, the great, will fall. Let us bring our baggage, our challenges particularly those difficult things to God, so that God may solve them for us. I belong to many social media groups, good ones, of course. And this morning, one of them is called Positive Thoughts for the Day. There was a face of Jesus. Somebody posted a face of Jesus with the following message. The first one, Jesus was extending his hand, and he was saying, My child, you are worrying too much. Remember, nothing is hard for me. I am going to do a miracle in your life. And I was asking myself, which miracle could God be talking about? That is something God wants to touch in our lives. We must never lose faith but we must actually live in that faith. Why? All these other things that happen introduce God into our circumstance. And as Jesus is saying, when these things are happening, don't run away. Lift up your heart. Your liberation is at hand. Let us pray today that God may give us the grace to turn our worry into our worship in this Eucharist this morning and that God may take over. The second uh, thing was the face of Jesus smiling. And what was the message? Jesus was saying, wait. You don't have to go through this life alone. I will do everything to make you victorious. Invite me into your life, and you won't regret it. Something is very unique about invitation in the readings of today. 
we look at the second reading, Christ is talking about invitation, and even the first reading. And even, actually, the responsorial psalm, happy are those who are invited into the banquet of the Lamb. But today, God is telling us, He is inviting us to invite Him. Nyasae luongowa, mundo wa luonge ngimawa. Emomio nyasae jiwo waka uono, nigigo matek madongo ma ok nyalre malich, chieng moro no room, to mago ma ok nyalre chieng moro no bedi. Mare momio wane neso moku wonka Babilono gore pin kendo ketore, to jogo moye kum nyasae uchung malo. Wawe uru luoro tembe, wale muru kawan gitem, mudo nyasai manya logik mokoduto, oji ungi mawa. Kikwa luor tem, tem buro rumo, gimanya kawa luore ni richo, richo tie kongi mawa. Let us not be afraid of trials and temptations in our lives. What we must be afraid of is sin. Sin destroys our life. Temptations and persecutions define our life. Temptations and persecution define the life of the matters of Vietnam that we celebrate today. Let us allow God to take charge and everything will be in control.